WCBI News at 6 starts now. Multiple injuries have been reported in Texas after a large tornado ripped through a populated area. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Riley Livingston. And I'm Cash Mike Lackwell. Devastated homes, uprooted trees, and downed power lines now dot the landscape in the town of Franklin. The National Weather Service confirms a large and extremely dangerous tornado passed through the area. More twisters could spawn throughout Saturday as severe thunderstorms are expected to continue into the evening. About 1,600 people live in Franklin and it's located two hours east of Waco. Those storms are now headed into our neck of the woods. We turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson for a first look at our forecast and a first look at these storms. How are we looking, Keith? Well, right now we have no issues out there. I do want to show you this cool uh, structure in Vernon looking to the east. We have a shower that has been showing a little bit of rotation earlier. Some of these showers in the west Alabama, but uh, those are weakening here as they drift farther into some stable air. Some non-severe activity with some thunder and lightning back to our northwest. Uh, but these strong storms down here near Yazoo City, northwest of Jackson, these have been pretty significant over the last hour or so. Uh, still some tornado warnings down here. Large hail, damaging wind. Lots of rainfall and notice the general motion from southwest to northeast. So they are moving our general direction and we will of course be watching out for that. Now, having said that, the air in our area generally stable. We've got 60s in many spots, a little bit warmer to the south. So as some of that comes on in, it may not survive. But temperatures could still climb a little bit more as we go throughout the evening hours. As the wind increases, we will keep the chance for strong storms in the forecast for this evening. Damaging wind, the main threat, maybe a, an isolated tornado or two, and some heavy rain. Your full forecast in just a few minutes. Hey, Riley, we are in Winona right now and uh, watching things from a distance. Now, some ways to stay safe in back at home or wherever you are. One, have the WCBI mobile app on your phone. That's a great way to stay informed. We'll send you a push alert if a warning is issued for your area. There also are a lot of great resources on our website, WCBI.com. We've got information on storm shelters and uh, how to build a safety plan in case you need to do that. Now is the time to prepare as these storms come in. As meteorologists, we know that the most vulnerable time is weekends and at night. So. We're particularly concerned with folks being out and the weekend, so make sure you stay aware. We'll be reporting in the field and keeping our eyes on things. In Monona, I'm Jacob Dickey with WCBI. Thank you, Jacob. A Marshall County deputy is in the hospital after being shot in off, on, in, on duty. It happened Friday evening during a narcotics investigation. The sheriff said the suspect shot the deputy at least three times at the end of a high-speed chase. After the shooting, the suspect barricaded himself in a house and held law enforcement in a standoff for hours. A SWAT team and deputies were trying to make contact with the suspect around 10.30 p.m. The suspect walked out of the house, pulled a gun, and fatally shot himself. As for the deputy who was shot, sources said Saturday morning that he is alert and had surgery on his leg. A bulletproof vest likely saved his life. The Cotton District Art Festival is a staple during Super Bulldog Weekend. It's something that area residents look forward to every year, and many of the vendors travel hundreds of miles to take place in it. That's right, Riley, and that's why that many people were actually disappointed when news broke out early this morning that the festival would be canceled due to severe weather. Luckily, a few local businesses stepped up to offer a solution. I was staying at the Red Roof Inn down the road, and all I could think was, oh no, what am I going to do? Cause, you know, I spent all this time making stuff. I'm a full-time student. I have a nine-month-old at home and a nine-year-old, and I was just like, I've got to figure something out. And Jordan Clark and Ryan Sims are just two of many vendors who traveled hundreds of miles for the annual Cotton District Arts Festival, only to have it be canceled. We were pretty disappointed. We had just finished unloading everything, and we were setting up when we got the news. Um, so obviously we were disappointed, uh, not just for ourselves, but for the whole community, all the other vendors. I mean, at the hotel, there were people from New York, you know, Wisconsin, everywhere. So, I mean, it really brings people from all over the country together. Uh, I do know that some people came from Austin, Texas. Uh, you know, that's 10 hours away, and uh, unfortunately, the the deposits are non-refundable and stuff, 
It's just the way it goes. Ryan Handron is the manager at Rick's Cafe in Starkville. He's also one of the various business managers across the city that decided to open their doors to any vendors who needed a place to set up. We know a lot of the vendors. We know a lot of the artists that, you know, uh, have money and time invested in making money today. And so we have a roof and there wasn't anything going on here this afternoon. So we opened our doors to them. And participants say that the community coming together to support local art vendors and merchants in a time of need is what the Arts Festival is all about. That's why I love doing the Art Festival because most of the people that come and see me, they come and see me every year. I know their dogs, I know them, they give me hugs, you know, they ask about my children, you know, they ask how I'm doing, I ask how they're doing. It really, I mean, that's why I love doing that. A couple local businesses just stood up and did it without being asked. We knew it was the right thing to do. We had the space and, you know, these are our friends. These are the people that live next to us and so it's the right thing to do. We're, make, we're here making lemonade is what I like to say. Well, several vendors also said that although they hate that the festival was canceled, they understand that it was the right call to make. And so far, over one million pounds of debris from the Columbus tornado has been picked up. Looks Great Services has been collecting debris off the side of the road since Tuesday. They say it's important for everyone to push anything from the tornado that they don't want in their yard onto the side of the road for pickup while they still can. You know, once we're gone, we're gone. So, you know, if you got stuff from your yards, anything that's caused from the from the tornado, you know, we want to help. We want to help make this town like it never happened, kind of get everything out to the streets while we're here and we'll pick it up and try to make everything right again. Well, the crew is set to continue picking up debris until late next week. Around 70 young girls from all over Northeast Mississippi learned how to be empowered this weekend. The Bank Corps South Conference Center was the site of Girl Talk 2019, and Toyota was a signature sponsor. Fifth through ninth grade girls were equipped with skills like leadership development, conflict resolution, and as we see here, self-defense techniques. Event chair Amy Tate says there is a reason why this program is, is geared to this age level. Studies have shown that at about sixth grade, girls' confidence drops about 30 percent. So we felt like capturing this age group would help them close that gap with some of the skills that we're teaching them today. One of the speakers was our very own Andrea Self, who talked about personal branding. Tate says they hope the girls will be able to go back to their schools and share what they learned with other girls. Life is a lesson well taught. A group of women decided they wanted to help guide young girls into a bright future. Our Stephanie Poole went to the event and brings us the story. Phenomenal's women's group hosted a glitz and glam self-care day made to build confidence, combat low self-esteem, and to stop bullying. Over 100 girls came out to participate along with their mothers. We decided to get together and give back to our community. So we decided to have a glitz and glam day camp for girls. And this camp is to empower girls ages 5 to 18 to be positive, to be confident, and to be you. We want to do something to let them know that they're beautiful, they're smart, regardless of their size, their color, whatever. Local businesses donated decorations and the door prizes. They also took the time out of their schedules to do nails, hair, and makeup. The goodies consisted of candles and self-care items to go home with each one of the girls. Evangelist Shay Johnson was the main speaker. She taught the girls how to be confident in themselves while setting out to grow into young women. Normally between the age of um, 10 up until high school, they fall into different peer pressures and stuff of that nature. So we just tried to, I came in to kind of speak to them to motivate them to keep a positive attitude, a great outlook, and mainly if they wanted to succeed, they have to be teachable as well as have God at the center of their lives, and with that, they can just succeed. Shanti Dixon says this event truly left an impact on her life. It's a new experience, and I get to learn more about my attitude and how to work towards my career that I want to do. Be positive. Set your mind to do something, you can do it. Reporting in Chickasaw County, Stephanie Poole, WCBI News. This is the first year the Phenomenal Women's Group hosted this event. They plan to continue each year. Well, it's time to dust off your old LPs and vinyl records. That's right. It's National Record Store Day. We'll have more on how local shops are celebrating after the break. 
Well, Riley, believe it or not, for many generations, people around the world actually used the phonograph to listen to their wow. favorite music. And now in the 21st century, vinyl records are making a comeback, Cash. WCBI's Chad Groening has more. For many years, these are what you would see when you entered a record store. 33 RPM long-playing records. But then came the new technology, and these vinyl analog records were replaced by digital CDs. But at Rockstar Records in Tupelo, you can find not only vintage LPs from the 60s and 70s, but also newly minted vinyl records of artists of today. Owner Leslie Jones says vinyl is back. It sounds better, and a lot of folks want to go back and get it for the artwork of the, uh, of the album itself. And why would older technology sound better than the high-tech recordings of today? Because it's analog sound compared to the digital, so the digital sound is more compressed, so the analog sound on the vinyl sounds more crisp, more full. You might hear a trumpet that you didn't hear on a record from Elvis back in the day, or you might hear a backup singer on a Beatles record that you didn't hear back in the, you know, that you can't hear on a CD, but you can hear it from a record back in the day. And vinyl is even popular with younger people, like 19-year-old Sam Bates of Tupelo, who didn't grow up with it. Well, it's kind of, it sounds a lot better, really. Uh, plus, I like getting them to, you know, the artwork of, you know, uh, some bands I listen to, like they put theirs on like specially colored vinyl. Like I'll, I got one that's like tie-dyed, and it just it looks really cool and it sounds amazing. And just the collectible aspect of it is what I really like. And shoppers at Rockstar Records got some special deals because it was Record Store Day, conceived in 2007 as a way to celebrate and spread the word about the unique culture surrounding independently owned record stores around the world. Yeah, Record Store Day is a is a day. It's the second Saturday in April most of the time. There's also a version on Black Friday, but that's not officially Record Store Day. April is officially Record Store Day. Um, they come out with vinyl that is only made for today. Uh, in a special configuration, it may be numbered, it, they're all limited quantities, may have a poster, may have a sticker, something that makes it special and unique. Um, and you can only buy it at independent record stores. You can't buy it, you know, at the, at the big boys, but you can only buy it from little guys like us. Jones says Record Store Day is the busiest day of the year for all independent record stores. Chad Groening, WCBI News, Tupelo. This year marks 12 years since Record Store Day began. Pretty quiet, pretty stable in Columbus right now. We are overcast. We do have a tornado watch for Grenada, Montgomery, Carroll, Atala, and Leak counties that goes until 9. There could be some additional watches issued later tonight. We'll have another radar check and just track this system as it comes on in here after the break. Stay tuned. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Here's our Alpha Insurance Camera Network, Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon there at Durham's Pharmacy. We've had some interesting clouds over there. Louisville, Mississippi, we had some wet weather down there earlier today. But right now, more clouds than anything else across our region. Let's do a little radar tour. First, let's talk about these showers in Fayette County, Alabama, lifting from south to north. Uh, some of those showed some interesting rotation, uh, but generally uh, that stayed in the cloud, not reaching the lowest level there near the surface, but those are moving away anyway. We have some uh, stratiform rain with some embedded thunder and lightning up here from Bruce, Grenada, Water Valley, non-severe activity. Uh, the biggest storm cell right now approaching I-55. Look at that tornado warning still for that cell east of Yazoo City. If nothing else, damaging wind, large hail potential in that, and when you see that little arc right there, that little bow, there could be some very strong wind in that. Uh, that complex has had a history of damaging wind and even some tornadoes uh, back in uh, Louisiana. But our wind shear rate is losing a little bit of its luster as it pushes to the northeast, as it taps into some more stable air where we live or closer to where we live. But we have one line of storms that goes from Jackson to Baton Rouge, another batch of storms from Monroe uh, down to Lake Charles in Beaumont, Texas. So all of that will be moving through tonight. Warm and unstable just to our south. Low 60s in Tupelo, 62, 68 in Columbus, 80 in Meridian and in Hattiesburg. So very unstable just to our south. Around here, not as unstable, but look at these gradient winds just to our south. 30 to 45 mile per hour winds. Those are most likely outside of the thunderstorms. So even within the thunderstorms, we do have a damaging wind potential outside of the thunderstorms. It will be breezy later this evening and tonight. 
We're still on guard for an isolated tornado or two around here and some heavy rainfall as well. So uh, be sure you stay safe with us here at WCBI, your mobile app, your weather radio. Keep it on. We're going into uh, dark after sunset here. Of course, we'll stream live here on TV and also WCBI.com slash live. Our high resolution computer model nailing it right now, picking up on the showers in West Alabama. And notice this big batch of storms over there right along I-55. As we roll on into 10 o'clock, here it comes. Now, keep in mind, the air around here is still pretty stable, but some of these could still be severe as they come on in later this evening and tonight. This is 1 o'clock in the morning approaching the state line, so still a chance for some heavy storms. And then by 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, this is shifting most of it to our east. So hopefully by 3 o'clock, we can say goodbye the, to the severe weather threat. Tomorrow morning, we may br wake up to a few breaks in the cloud deck before the clouds come on back. Cool day uh, is on tap for tomorrow. A cool day with showers possible, lots of clouds, and much cooler temperatures. Tonight, down into the 60s in the east, maybe some 50s back to the west. And for tomorrow, we start out in the 60s, cooling down into the 50s as the day goes on. So uh, temperatures tomorrow morning will be cool. Tomorrow afternoon, look at this, even cooler tomorrow night down into the upper 30s to around 40 degrees. Let's check out your AccuWeather 70 forecast. So much more stable starting tomorrow. Pretty nice Monday and Tuesday. More storms possible by Wednesday and Thursday. Some of those could be on the hefty side. More of the show after the break. Your WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb. Mississippi State not about to let the weather physically rain on their parade. Well, not a parade, actually, Super Bulldog weekend. More importantly, the maroon and white game. Let's get to Stark Vegas. Hey, Davis Wade, it's been a minute. Good to see you. The first quarter, maroon at the 10 yard line. Kylan Hill up the gut, bouncing off tacklers as usual. Takes the ball to the two yard line. Next play, Hill takes the carry again into the end zone for the first TD of the game. Maroon leading by seven. Hill would have 47 yards for the day. Maroon ball again. Keaton Thompson drops back, waits for the receiver to get open before he finds Devonta Jason over the middle for the grab and the first down. Next play, play action for Thompson. The pump fake, and then he takes it up the middle for a nice pickup. Moving on two plays later, Nick Gibson gets the carry. Going to battle his way into the end zone. Hull finished the day with two touchdowns. Maroon now leading by 14 to nothing. Second quarter, Maroon ball. Thompson dropping back, scanning, scanning until he finds Austin Williams with the nasty grab. Another touchdown for the Maroon. They go up 20 nothing here. Next possession, White with the ball. Jalen Maiden hands the ball off to Robert Wivers, who fights his way into the end zone. Maroon now only up by 20 to 7, if you can say that's closing the gap. They go on to dominate in this one, though. They take this game. By 50 to 10, the final score. More on the game from the team. For all the great things we did last year defensively, you know, led, led the SEC in scoring defense in the you know most most statistical categories. The one that Coach Shupin, you know, we talked about as a staff is increasing the number of turnovers that we that we produce, and uh, you know, got two of those today. Uh, and, yeah, and that linebacking core, I'd be hard pressed to find a group that's you know any deeper in the SEC or in the country with uh, you know Errol, Willie, Leo, Tim Washington, and if you count the star position with Brian Cole. I feel like we're the best in the nation. You know, uh, we still got a lot of work to do, but uh, Coach Marv is pushing us, Coach Shoop is pushing us, and I feel like we got the guys to be literally the best in the nation. Back with my guys, you know, I got injured last year, so it just feels good to just be back in the field. I just thank God. I feel like uh, as far as the spring in general, I think we had a really good spring. Uh, better than last year, you know, uh, in all three phases. I feel like, uh, you know, just getting that second year under Coach Moore here and, and being more comfortable with the system and things that uh, he's trying to do, you know, and improving upon the culture, I feel like this spring was uh, really big for us. Well, I had no clue what I was doing, and Coach Bronner yelled at me like I was there for three years. But um, it was definitely, it was, a good, it was a good experience. I mean, any, any experience is a good experience. Well, the other part of Super Bulldog wait weekend taking place at Duty Noble, MSU hosting Alabama for game two of the series. Bottom of the fourth, bases loaded. Rowdy Jordan sends one deep out to left field. A two RBI single for Jordan gives MSU a two nothing lead. Bottom of the fifth, now two runners on, and Jordan Westberg lines it up the left side. The hit will get Gilbert into home for the run. Westberg's 40th RBI of 
the season. Bottom of the seventh, Elijah McNamee at the plate. It's going to pop it up, and honey, I don't think that ball is in Stark Vegas anymore. A two-run homer for McNamee, and the Diamond Dogs have a 5-1 to one lead over the Crimson Tide. That same inning, two runners on. Dustin Skelton gets in on the home run derby. That ball is headed back to the left field lofts. A three-run home run from Skelton makes it 8-1 to one for Mississippi State. And after taking game one in a big way, State goes on to get the win in game two in an even bigger way. The final 9-1 to one over Alabama. The Bulldogs take the weekend series outright 2 to nothing. State finishing out the weekend series tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. Oxford and the Rebels fell victim to the weather this afternoon. Game two has been scheduled for tomorrow. And tomorrow now we'll be featuring a doubleheader. The first game of the day will be beginning at 1 p.m. That final game happening 45 minutes after the finish of the first game. We'll keep you updated on that as that game finishes up tomorrow. That's it for sports. The last look at your weather is coming up after the break. Stick with us. Watching this one storm moving towards Atala County, a severe thunderstorm warning until 7:30. This will be uh, approaching Kosciuszko here in the near term, damaging wind potential, large hail too. Uh, so that's the biggest storm we have in our region right now. But the trend is taking it closer and closer to our area. But as I mentioned earlier, the air around here is still fairly stable. So at this point, we're watching it. That's the only big kahuna, if you will, out there. Uh, there could be some more stronger storms later this evening. Just stay with us here on uh, WCBI TV, Facebook, Twitter, all throughout the evening. The severe threat goes away by about 3 a.m. at the latest. Yeah, but you can also check our website to see where some tornado shelters are near your area. There you go. We hope everyone has a great night.